Yo, 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 man. Welcome back to another episode of For the Love of the Game. I'm your host, The Professor, and we got NBA Finals Talk. Milwaukee, Deer District, stand up. You know what I'm saying? Um, before we dive deep into the video, if you could, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to have to pull the percentages up again, but it's probably like... If I had to guess, I would say probably still about like 85% of y'all who are watching these videos, which I appreciate, but y'all are not subscribed. So, you know what I'm saying? I want to appreciate y'all, but can y'all appreciate me? Thank you. You know, so just leave a subscribe, leave a comment, even if it's a hate comment. All comments are love comments if you ask me. But let's get to it. The NBA Finals are now tied 2-2. Uh, Milwaukee went home, took care of business. Really, both teams in this series should feel okay. When it was 2-0 Phoenix's way, Milwaukee should have said, okay, we didn't necessarily take care of business because we didn't steal one at their place, but all we got to do is come home and win our two, and we right back in this. Protect home court for us, we right back in it. Um, they do that. They win two. The series now tied 2-2. Phoenix, they were up two. To them, I think they should have the same mindset that I just spoke on that Milwaukee should have had. They should just be like, hey, we did not steal one on the road. But that's okay. We took care of it. We got game five at the crib. Electric intensity. It We're going to be live. They need to capitalize on that one. Both of these teams should be feeling uh, just about the same. I know Milwaukee might be on a higher high just because their wins are more recent. But Phoenix came out, took control, um, had some things not go their way. I'll get to that here. Uh, really, if we look at Phoenix, I think the problem is uh, Chris Paul, man. And, and it's crazy to say, but Chris Paul is arguably one of the greatest point guards ever. He's top five in my book. Everybody keeps saying if he wins a ring, will that make him top five point guards? Cut it. Dead it. He's already top five point guards to ever play the game. Solidified, set in stone. But when you're on the floor as much as he is, okay, you're going to have turnovers. But we've known, we there's, no. No, nah, that's me. I'm not even going to say that. We know Chris Paul. He plays X amount of minutes every game. There are certain things we don't expect from Chris Paul, and one of them are to have 15 combined turnovers over the last three games. Had the huge turnover when it was 101 to 99 late in the game. Um, I don't know. He's 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 not looking too much like himself. Five for 13 shooting, um, and then and then he throw and then he has seven assists, ten points. 10 points from Chris Paul. D-Book, of course, man, 17 for 28. He hit a lot of Kobe S shots, right? Like, um, I'm not really a fan of the comparison, okay? I think I think you got you to gotta develop a little bit more. We always take these guys who have the potential. I know Devin Booker has a little bit more than potential, but we always take these guys who have the potential to be something and automatically compare them to that guy. Let's wait. Let it fill out. But as far as tonight, I wasn't mad at the comparison, man. He had a lot of double clutches, a lot of post-spin turnarounds. Um, he lives in the midi. Uh, so he, he had 28 shots. That's wonderful. That's what you need. Chris Paul had 13 shots. See, you would like Chris Paul if D-Book is having 28 shots. Ideally, on the night, you would like Chris Paul to have about 22 shots as well, right? Aggressiveness. Um, but 17 for 28, he had 42 uh, didn't really do much else, but that's fine. He literally had two assists, one rebound. Maybe that's a little bit of the problem. Maybe you got 42 from him, but no facilitating, no rebounding. Uh, uh, the only thing he had was five personal fouls. I mean, he had four turnovers. So, honestly, honestly, in the NBA Finals, game four, the NBA Finals, not the best game for D-Buck. Quote me on it. I understand the points. I get it. But when you have 42 points, no steals, two assists, one rebound and five fouls in your plus and minus is a zero. The reason it's a zero is because you have 42. Boom. But then you had no other stats. So it just canceled out. That's exactly what happened. Okay game, literally. But, man, he had some tough buckets, like I was saying. Just just was able to get to his spot anywhere on the floor, rise up and elevate. Um, can't put too much of the blame on him. But this game, you got 15 from Jay Crowder. Let me look. You got 10 from Cameron Johnson. 10 from Chris Paul, 9 from Cameron Payne, 15 from Jay Crowder. 
Um, what they're missing right now, before I get to my last point, what Phoenix is missing right now, one, is CP, okay, because Chris Paul had 10, um, but two, is their third guy. Those first two games, DeAndre Ayton, amazing game one, 22 and 19. Mikael Bridges, game two, 27. You need those other guys. These are the finals, man, and especially, um... When it gets deeper into the finals, which we are now at game four and all the film and all the days you have, you get two days now. You got two days. That's a lot in the NBA. There, that's a lot of time to be able to adjust and come out with a different scheme. So to me, I would say their problem is Chris Paul, like I said, not not handling the ball as well. And they need their third guy. Your third guy, which some nights is DeAndre Ayton. He has six. He did have 17 rebounds, but uh, he has six. He also... No, that's Jay Crowder. All right, so you get the Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder had 15. He also, he had five fouls, though. Uh, he had eight boards, though. So, I mean, okay. You, you could take the 15 to eight from your third guy. No problem. But Mikael Bridges, another guy you would like to be your third, seven points. So, right now, this game is really reminiscent to the Giannis game two. That's what that is. When Giannis had, like, 42 and they lost, remember, uh, Drew Holiday had like 11, Chris Mills had like 17. This game is really reminiscent to that in the matter of D-Book had 42. The next guy had 15, and that's Jay Crowder. When D-Book is up this high at 42, your next guy, one, can't have 15, and two, it can't be Jay Crowder, all right? So it either needs to be more points from Jay Crowder. Or that next guy with 15, it, it just can't be him. It needs to be Aiden. It needs to be Chris Paul. It needs to be Cameron Payne. Uh, it needs to be Mikael Bridges. But Jay Crowder, I, I don't think, is the guy you want there. Um, But game three, Phoenix did amazing things. They let it slip late, but they did amazing things. Again, Phoenix, you should be feeling good. You got game five at your place. Take care of game five. This is the way I look at it. This is how every series goes, okay? The the home team has momentum. They're going to have game five, okay? Game six, back in Milwaukee. Milwaukee's mindset is we can't let this end right now. We're going to go super hard. We're at home, so everything will go our way. They're going to win game six. Game seven, anything can happen in the game seven. Everything's on the line. And give me Milwaukee. I picked them to win early. Uh, boom. Here we go. I remember when or analysts or or people with a sports voice or people with a sports opinion need to let series play out. When this was 2-0, everybody's like, are we going to get a series? Are we going to have a game? Is there going to be something? Do you know how the complexion of a series changes game by game? The the feeling Phoenix had after winning game one and the feeling they had after winning game two are completely different. The feeling that the Bucks had after losing the first two games and now winning the, the next two games, the last two games, is completely different. The complexion of a series changes overnight in the playoffs. So... I think it was too early. Everybody talking about the Suns might sweep them. It might be them in five. I like it. Stop it, man. These are two teams that went to the finals for a reason. You know, you got to make adjustments. The biggest adjustment for Milwaukee is that we finally, finally have some pick and roll with Giannis and Chris Middleton. And Giannis was less ball dominant. That's what we've been preaching, right? Throw them in a position where your two best offensive players are in the pick and roll. What do you do? Middleton goes off for 40 tonight. Game three, Giannis goes for 40. I mean, that is what we wanted to see. And Giannis being less ball dominant, I said it. Giannis has the potential to either be Shaq or Kevin Durant. You know, and, and he was flirting in that line, but he was flirting with a with a little bit of Kevin Durant. He's flirting with a little bit more of KD. The last two games, Coach Bud cut that and said, you wear number 34 for a reason. There was another great. Another big man, another strong man, another dunking man who wore number 34. You need to take after him. So now we're seeing Giannis kick it up early in transition. We're seeing Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday really be the dominant ball handlers 
in Giannis is setting picks. They're working off the picks. If you got a shot, you take it. Um, or you're dumping a Giannis. Giannis is getting more dunks than I would. And they're not driving in dunks. They're not driving dunks. They are dump off dunks, offensive rebound dunks. Um, and, and the energy is changing for Milwaukee. The, there's a different energy. And they're, they're playing a lot harder and crashing boards. P.J. Tucker is crashing the offensive glass and winning all 50-50 balls the last two games. That's huge in the playoffs, much less in the finals. That's huge. You need every possession. Every possession counts in these finals. P.J. Tucker's doing great for that. Um, Chris Middleton went ahead and deaded the rumor that he averages 31 in game threes and 21 in all other games, which was a crazy stat, but game four, he had 40. So he can't average 21 no more. Um, and, and that's what I like to see, bro. I think Drew Holiday also needs a little bit of credit. Drew Holiday is not playing the best by the numbers, but Drew Holiday shot four for 20, okay? He shot four for 20. While I say that and that sounds awful, let me put it in retrospect for you. He had a plus minus of eight, okay? So you missed 15 shots, but he grabbed seven rebounds, seven assists, three steals, and one turnover, and he had 13 points. And he hit some big shots down the stretch. And that's why I say I think he's playing well. Because he's had weird numbers this whole playoffs, right? But he never stopped shooting. In order to go four for 20, that means you got you to gotta go past two for six. You know? Two for 11. And two for 11, you're like, I don't know if I should keep doing this. Four for 20. Never stop shooting. Keep playing. Keep being aggressive. You love what he's doing on the defensive end. Which he's gonna get scored on, but he's picking up D Book and Chris Paul full court every play. Full court. So, do you want more on offense? Yes. But you live with the four for twenty, with the defensive effort, with the seven rebounds, the seven assists, the thirteen points, the plus eight um plus minus rating, and you live with the defensive effort he's giving you. Chris Middleton finally came alive. Fifteen for thirty three, six boards, four assists, forty points. Shot 45% from the field. Um, Giannis also had 26 and 14 and 8. And now they're rolling. And I think Chris Middleton, he was due in a game like this. We've been waiting for Chris Middleton to do something. Giannis been carrying the load. We knew he was due in for a game like this. I seen a tweet, and it was the most accurate thing. And it was like, Chris Middleton either being Kobe or Cal Kuzma is becoming a regular thing. I ain't going to slander Cal Kuzma. I mess with Cal Kuzma. I'm just saying that's what the, that's what the tweet said. Don't, don't take it out on me if you see this, Cal. Um... But, and that's very true, man. He is the second best player on that team. So, in a game like this, you need big buckets from him. And another difference in this game is just when you look at the point totals. You look at 26 from Giannis, 14 from Brooke Lopez, 40 from Middleton, 13 from Drew, and 11 from Pat. Those are your guys who play most of the game. Bobby Porter's got about 20 minutes. He had three points, but... For those guys who play most of the game, you need balanced scoring like that. You need your two top dogs to be top dogs. And the rest of your surrounding role players need to be just that and make shots when, when their name is called on. Uh, we got ourselves a series, but not technically because it's really not a series until somebody went on the road. We ain't had that happen yet. We're going to have to have that happen in, in, I mean, for the rest of the series, something's going to happen. Give me Milwaukee in seven. I like I like the adjustments they made with the pick and roll. I like the defense Drew Holiday is playing. Um, but then again, for Phoenix Suns, for Phoenix fans, I, I'm I don't know. I'm not worried. You got you got D book game three having ten, okay. You got him game four having forty, but you got Chris Paul having ten. As soon as what I'm about to say for them is the same thing I said for Milwaukee. Literally, you can check it out in my previous videos when I said everything was going right for Phoenix, nothing was going right for Milwaukee. Everything's going right for Milwaukee. Nothing's going right for Phoenix right now. As far as they need to get all their guys back on one page. And their big three needs to come out game five at home. Set the tone. Be aggressive. Come out. Try to get a dub. As far as Milwaukee, just keep doing what you're doing. Middleton, you got to be in for a good game. Drew, you owe us about 25. You owe us a 25. So, so we waiting for that game five, six, or seven. Giannis. There was another dude who wore number 34. Big dunking man. Big setting pick man. Big rolling man. 
Whoa, 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 I almost ended this video without talking about the block? Let me say this. I, I asked my homie this about two months ago. I said, Giannis gets dumped on a lot, but do we not ever roast it or blow it up because he's a defensive player of the year and because he always makes the effort? See, in order to get dunked on, you got to be in the vicinity. You got to make the effort. Giannis makes an effort on every single, yeah, when he's in the paint. We've seen him get dunked on, but we've also seen him be there rotating late or jumping late or anything, but he's trying. In a press conference, you heard him say, I thought I was going to get dunked on. That's what you want from your star player. That is winning effort to say, I thought I was going to get dunked on, but you going to have to dunk on me before I just let you dunk it late in this game in this game four finals. So you're going to have to put me on the poster and show me before I just let you dunk. Respect to him. He went up, got a crazy block, a crazy block that was Bron esque. Shout out Iguodala. He said it. He know it firsthand. Um, that's a big time block. Him and Bron gonna have to argue about biggest block in the finals. They still go to Bron because that happened in a game seven against a team who was not supposed to be beat, seventy three and nine. So still go to Bron. But Giannis to guard the pick. D book been throwing that little left handed soft oop. Oh, the whole playoffs, he's so good at it. Coming off the pick, coming off, and just throw it up real quick. Might have been an inch too high, which let Giannis recover. But for d to throw that up and Giannis to locate the ball, turn around, see his eight, and jump up, block it to save the day and really possibly win them the game and, and, and put it away for him. Shout out that man, Giannis. He don't get a lot of respect. He don't get a lot of respect from me, but these finals, they, they, they saying something different. So look, man, watch my previous. I'll see y'all next time. We out. Peace.